Thank you very much. Appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you. Well, we're going to party over here now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes, I'm out of retirement again. I've tried it three times. doesn't work for me. I guess I just like doing what I do, folks. It's, just, it's great to be around you patriots. It is great to be here at this time. This is your time. I, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. I got a great speech prepared, but you know, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm here because there's a, there's a couple of reasons. I want you to know that you have been prepared for a shift in this world. You have been uniquely prepared. I have never seen an organization that has had 50 years of preparation 50 years of going through the desert, 50 years of being called names and ridiculed, 50 years of nobody understanding what you were trying to say, 50 years to arrive at this place where now everyone is looking for what you have. 50 years of people not paying any attention and now everyone seek what you have, freedom. Freedom. Nobody, every family now has been exposed to this wrath that's coming to you. Every family has been affected by their home values going down by half. They've seen their 401ks disappear. They've seen the career they put all their time and effort into vanish between right in front of their face. They have seen it. They no longer have confidence. This is no longer a season for casual workers. This is a season for those seeking freedom. And you have a unique position because now you have been through the fire. You have evaluated your business. You know who you are and everyone you've ever talked to is now wondering if this thing is gonna work for them. So I'm here to tell you, prepare for the answer. Prepare for the yes. Prepare yourself to explode in this new business environment. This is custom made for you. My name is Mason Weaver, and I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm a troublemaker. I, I'm going to tell you why. We, I'm going to talk about two things tonight, and both of these are in my books, The Rope and Diamond in the Rough, which is in the back, because I can't cover it all in, in these two nights, but I want to explain to you there's something, there's a reason why everyone you know is not here tonight. There's a reason why they didn't follow you. There's a reason why they didn't get excited about traveling here to hear me speak. I don't understand why, but that's, that's, that's a reason. Because they look at the world different than you look at the world. And I'm gonna talk about those differences because folks, if you can recognize the difference, the only thing you can do is avoid them. You cannot convert them. You cannot change them. You must recognize them and then avoid them because all they will do is drag you down. You cannot go into the future by looking in the past behind you. Now, I started off as a typical young man in, in, the, in, the, you know, in the prime of my life and I joined the Navy to see the world and get away from my father. <laughs> and I went to the military and I went to Vietnam and, and didn't get a scratch on me and someone dropped 2,800 pounds of steel on me. And I've been thinking about how I was gonna bring that information to you, just and why would I say it to you, but I, I think it's important for you to understand where I'm coming from. You know, in one instant, someone took away my strength, my energy, my career. In one instant, they took away everything I had valued, everything I had learned, everything I had processed. They took away my ability to earn a living, they took away my ability to take care of a family. Uh, they put me in constant pain the rest of my life. They did me harm to the point that I wanted to kill them. Uh, my desire in life was to get healthy enough 
to reach my hand around their throat and see just how hard I could squeeze to get their eyeballs to pop out. <laughs> That's my goal in life. And I, and I became very hateful and resentful. And I became mean. I went to Berkeley, angry black man. Anybody notice that I'm black? <laughs> yeah. I've been black all my life, except <laughs> it ain't surprised to me. I knew I was black. Except at Berkeley, I was an African American, but I, I got over that. <laughs> uh, but I hated people because this angry, just this man who tried to kill me. And it was a burden on my life. I couldn't achieve anything with all, all this hate, hatred. And I know that some of you have something in your life that's keeping you from taking that next step. Somebody did you wrong, the boss did you wrong, your ex or your present or your current, or someone did something to you that they owe you, that they harm you. I was disabled. I was, I was kicked out of the Navy. I was classified as unable to learn and to write and to walk and to work. They told me I could not earn a living, but they didn't tell me I couldn't earn income. No job, just income. So I had to do something. First I had to do was forgive this guy so I can go on my life. No matter what burdens in your heart right now, no matter who owes you what, you have to first get that burden off of you. I don't care if you're the first person in your family to go into business, if you're the first person to, to, to be free, the first person to go to college, I don't care what you have to be, you must first forgive all the harm given to you. It's important you do that because I found out that I was a slave. Let me see what a slave is. There's a difference between a slave and a prisoner. The reason your friends and associates are not here tonight with you is that you were a prisoner trying to escape the prison and they were a slave trying to please their masters. That's the reason. You see, you are a prisoner and all these walls around you, you know if I can just chip through them or dig under them or climb over it, I can be free. Freedom is right over that wall. And you spend all your life trying to dig with a spoon through that concrete wall. And you raise your kids to seek freedom. They will never be a slave. They'll never give up on, on being free. But your friend, your neighbor, your uncle, your brother, your mama, she's sitting back thinking how good it is to please master. She had bragged to you about that great union job she has and how she's working 30. I had a great guy tell me he has a great job. He's only been laid off three times in 12 years. <laughs> slave. Slave. They take pride in slaving for somebody else. You cannot have that person in your business. They will come around and say, you want to be free. How can you be free of master? He, I get my food from the bowl. It's master's bowl. They will look at you like you're crazy. They will go tell master, he's trying to escape. But if you got a bunch of people just like yourself, a bunch of folks that want to go where you're going, a bunch of people who, who realize that freedom is obtainable, they will organize with you, they will help you build this, this freedom train, and they'll go to freedom with you. That's what you need, people just like yourself. Think about what your business would be like if you had six people just like yourself. They'd be here, number one. <laughs> They'd be here. And if you, if you understood that, see, what, a, what you're doing, you're throwing the, the rope over the wall. Every time you show the plan, you're tying a knot in that rope. Every time you read a book, listen to a tape, especially my book, you t <laughs> you're, tying a, you're tying a knot in that rope. Now, when a, when a prisoner sees that rope over the wall, they will grab that rope climb up, tell their friends about it, and climb up the rope and praise you and thank you, high five you, and climb over to freedom. But a slave will see that same rope, he thinks you're gonna lynch him. Cause master told him freedom is bad. Master said, if you, if you get free, who gonna, who gonna pay your child's education for you? If you get free, who's gonna pay your taxes for you? If you get free, who gonna take care of my kids? Master does not want you to be free. Master wants you to be happy, content in your misery, but continue to work for his kids. You will never go to school and learn how to be free. 
School is endowed by business to train employees, not competitors. You're not going to learn it there. You're not going to learn. Your boss will never show you how he can obtain wealth. He will not show you that. You can go out and try all day long if you want to. I heard that the rich are getting richer. You heard that? And the poor are getting poor. That's great news. That is excellent news. The rich are getting richer because they found a way to create wealth. Why would they not duplicate it? If you found a way to make a thousand bucks today, why would you not do it tomorrow? Yes, the rich are getting richer and the poor, bless their heart, they are doing things that are keeping them poor and continue to do things, giving your kids the master to train and won't know why they grew up to hate you, giving your, give your 401k to him to invest and won't know why you go broke first. You keep doing the same things, keep saying things like, I want my check. What's a my check? You haven't done a day's work. We want my check. You are doing the same things that keep you broke, and that's why the poor are getting poor, and the rich are doing the same things that make them wealthy. If you want to be rich, real quick secret, do what rich people are doing. <laughs> freedom, freedom is natural, folks. It's a natural, it's not something new. It's not something you, you come up to in a, in a book or a theory or a PhD thesis. This is a natural response to living. You were born free. You were born naked, wet, and cold, and things get worse from then on out. <laughs> but you're born free. Let me explain what I'm talking about. You ever notice, any, any mothers here? A few mothers here. When you were pregnant, first off, were you expecting a baby or believing on a baby? <laughs> I believe one day I'll be rich. I believe one day I'm going to make it. I believe. You ask the woman who's pregnant if she expecting a baby or she believing on a baby. Because, folks, you can tell by her actions, she expects something going to be happening. <laughs> I mean, she, she goes to the doctor, she's about a little booty, she's painting the house pink or blue, whatever it's going to be. She is expecting, ex she's acting like she expects a baby here at a certain period of time. And she's preparing for this baby. That baby is well cared for and loved. She reads books, she listens to music, she eats the right kind of foods, she, she cuts up her, 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 um, Activities down, make sure the baby is safe. And, and all that nourishment and love, that baby in the womb never has been told one day you could be free of mama. Has been told that one day you could be on your own, baby. Has been told there's an outside. The baby is loved and given everything that child wants in life. But one day, someday, pretty soon, that child will violently push away from mother will violently get away because freedom is natural. The mother will take that child home and keep it clean and loved and changed often and powdered and fed and burped and changed in pretty little clothes that no one understands, little writing on the chest, the baby can't read no way, but a little writing, daddy's favorite. Oh. <laughs> keep the baby, every time the baby burp, mama gets up to check, the child gets all the love it can have a mother. But still, one day, that child will slither out of her arms onto the floor to crawl because freedom is natural. Mother will watch that baby crawl, never saying, one day, child, you're going to walk. Never saying it to the child. Child has never walked, never experienced walking. Don't know the concept of walking. But still, that child will get up on that coffee table and hold on and wobble and think and wobble and think and fall down 300 times, never achieving any success, but still try 301. Still never give up. It's irrelevant, don't even, failure is irrelevant to that child. It will never, I'm going to walk, because if I can walk, I can get that doggone bottle off the table without bugging you. <laughs> I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna be able to walk, 
So I ain't got to ask you for nothing. You can't listen to my gobble Google anyway. That child will walk and then the child will run. By the way, the child will walk when it stops thinking. Of, the child will, will take its first step when it stops thinking about falling. The child is holding to that table and thinking about that floor. Okay, that floor. And let's go. And it laughs and then falls down. Because think about the floor. It's thinking about failing. Are you thinking about failing? Are you in this business thinking, I'm, it may not, it didn't work for my Uncle Joe, and it may not work for me. I don't know. If you're thinking about failing, you're going to let go and hit the floor. The baby will walk the minute, the second, it gets tired of falling. As a matter of fact, watch your child walk. Watch yourself walk. Walking is controlled falling. You lift up, you lean forward, you fall forward, and hold yourself. You lift up, you hold forward, and you, and you walk. Control falling. You're going to fall, but control it. The baby masters falling. And then the child starts running. That's why mama gets nervous, because the child runs to the walls and skin his knees and busts his lip and get up and cry and run again from you. <laughs> All the love you give this child, it runs from you. Never give up. The next stage is irrelevant. And, and my mother taught me this. She raised eight kids. She gave birth to eight kids, seven black men. My, my mother has seven BMWs, black men working. <laughs> and she says, and she says that, she says that nature will not let you get to the next stage of development until you master the stage you're in. You can crawl for six months or nine months. When you get mastered it, you're going to walk. You're not going to walk until you master crawling. You're not going to run until you master walking. You can stay a year walking as a toddler or three months. Up to you. But when you master it, nature will allow you to go to the next stage. You will not go to your next stage in your life until you get around to mastering what you're doing right now. Master your business, master your products, master your presentation, master your ability to pick the right people for your group. When you master it, you're gonna be a master. Until you master it, you're gonna be struggling and frustrated with all those deadbeat slaves in your downline. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get back to it here. Get back on my cue, get back on my notes. <laughs> That baby teaches you. That child will run and run, but it will not be enough. You'll get it a pair of roller skates, a tricycle. It'll master it and get bored the next year. You got to get a bicycle. You can't tell me right now tonight, your teenage kids are not at home right now thinking about your car. <laughs> because freedom is natural. It's natural. But something happened, this mental disease called adulthood. Adulthood. Somebody has to hypnotize you and tell you you cannot reach the next level of independence and freedom unless you work for them and make them free. They have you thinking that your success depends on getting a good job. There are no good jobs except for the guy you work for. I looked at my wife one day. The most beautiful woman in the world. We had a vote one night about 4 o'clock in the morning. She won. <laughs> <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> how can I desire? I'm not saying it may not be necessary. But how can I desire for my wife to crawl out of my arms in the morning and get dressed in her good clothes, put on her makeup, and go out and depend on another man to get enough money to buy shoes? and not depend on me. It may be required, gentlemen, but it ain't natural. It can't be your goal. And, she, and when, it's time to get, when it's time to go somewhere with you for your weekend function, she gotta go ask the man she really works for if she can get off the go with you. Something wrong, it's not natural. You can't be satisfied there, you can't stay there. You can't stay there. If you want a real woman, get a free woman. Get a free woman. I'll let her know you're going to freedom. And you find out you got a real wife. But you let her go down and see Sammy Joe down here making that money for him. 
I don't know, brother. I don't know. That child, that's you. Learn from that child. Freedom is natural. Just relax and enjoy it and get the ride straight. Freedom is where you're going. And now in this country, now folks, everyone is looking for what you have. And what you must understand is that you all sitting here have a vision. But the vision is only given to you. You're the only one at your table right now that has your vision. Your downline doesn't have it. Your spouse doesn't have it. The vision is given to the leader. You have the vision. Your group has to see the vision in you. And that's based on your passion. They see where you're going. They want to be there too. They get excited behind your excitement. And they want to go there also. The rope is your key. You, can, you cannot bring people in your business who don't think you can be in business. How can you do that? They, they're not qualified. If you spend all your time bent over saying, you got to come to this meeting, you got to come to this meeting, guess what? You're not going to the meeting either. They're leading you. You owe them the respect to let them stay there, and one day your downline will come by and pick them up. But if you bug them enough, they're going to be so angry at you, they won't be able to go when your downline comes later on. Let them stay there. Because while you're sitting back trying to make them come, the next crown is walking by looking for an opportunity and can't find you because you're too busy with these folks who are just slaves. And they're scared. And see, here's the thing about truth. If you accept something that's true, you're going to lock it up. Right here, you're going to lock it up. It can be false, but you believe it's true. You're going to lock it up right here. And if someone comes by to you and say, I got information for you, clear evidence that your belief is wrong, it's too painful to take it out. You start arguing, debating, and putting things aside. You can't argue with them, people. You end up, like me, trying to convert people who hated me. How can you do that? I, I can understand it. Know your boundaries. You cannot change the boundaries. You can change your perspective, though. You know, what you are, you're the new Underground Railroad. You are the people who are leading captives free. But you leave captives free by setting up a safe house. This is the safe house. When you go out tonight and show the plan at night, you're, going, you're making a safe house. You're making an environment for people who want to leave captivity. You want to be able to present the people freedom. You're the coffee table the babies hold on to. And they're going to be scared. They're going to let go. They're going to fall. But you're saying to them, you're saying to them, I know you're scared because you're falling so many times. I know you're scared. You hit that floor 300 times. But you're saying you got folks up here that knows the way to freedom. And you're saying if you go with us, we will take you all the way to freedom. If you get lost, we are going to find you. We're not going to leave you out there. We're going to bring you all the way to freedom if you want to go. My hero, Harriet Tubman, went 27 times to her own plantation. 27 times with a bounty of $40,000 dead or alive. Just hit her in the head with a rock and tell me where she is to give you your freedom. 27 times. They had to know she was coming 27 times and she never lost one slave. She never lost one prisoner. She never, never was turned in by anybody because she only took people who wanted freedom. She didn't argue and debate whether the master going to be okay with this or not. We got permission from your pastor or not. Whether your daddy going to understand or not. She said, we leave at midnight. Do you want to be free or not? And that's what you have to be like. You have to be able to stand up and head towards your victory. And those who follow you are behind you. Those who are not are not for you. You cannot accept it no other kind of way. Now, the test is real simple. The test is real. Are you a prisoner or are you a slave? 
If you're sitting around tonight thinking, boy, I can't wait to get back to my job on Monday morning. I'm going to just make it finish. If you sit back wanting to know, boy, I think my car can make it one more month. If I can just please that boss, I get a job, a promotion. If you're thinking that, you're probably, chances are pretty much, you're a slave. But if you're sitting back listening to tapes on the way to work, if you can't wait to get off work to go show the plan to somebody else, try to find somebody new, if you if you anxious, if you think if you got a, a a picture of your mansion on your wall at home, you know my wife used to worry about me because for a long time I told her I lived in the land of no wants, and she didn't understand I live in the land of no wants. My property is called the land of no wants. And she'd understand that. We had, we had a nice little home in California, a townhouse, but no land called no wants until 30 years later when I brought it. And now we live on it. And she heard me talk about it 30 years ago, or 20 years ago. The land of no wants. Have your dream in front of you. Walk towards your dream. Make it as big as your imagination is going to make it. And walk towards your dream. Your dream. Put it in front of you. Put it in front of the TV so you got to take your dream down to watch TV. Try that. Have it written down. You're going to hear on stage here the testimony of other people, and they have in their testimony certain things that work. One thing you're going to hear over and over again, I was trying to, trying to think of how many of these meetings have I gone to? How many diamonds have I met? I can't count. But one thing I can tell you, almost everyone has the same testimony. One little thing in their testimony that always comes up, no matter who they are, where they are, male, female, short, tall. Same testimony, same little, little, little thing come out on them. Know what it is? They were saying, I was fooling around in the business, not really making it work, bouncing around, playing with it, thinking about it, trying it a little bit, not, and giving it up on it. And one day I was sitting at a major function, and I heard somebody on stage say something. Heard somebody on stage at a major function. You hear it over and over again. I was at a major function, a major function. You very seldom hear him say, I was on my way to a no-show. <laughs> you know, I was <laughs> midnight and Diddy was trying to show the player someplace and boy, it hit me, you know. It's always something on this stage at a major function. You have to get your people to the major functions. It is almost mandatory. I've talked to too many diamonds who sat there and their testimony is the same. I went home and made it work on one thing that only they heard, only this guy heard it, only this woman heard it, something on stage that hit them in the heart because they weren't where you are. You have to be sitting here first. That, in my opinion, it is almost mandatory. You, I don't know how you can go, diamond, any other kind of way because your magic your push will be right here from this stage. And therefore, you also got to bring folks that want to go to freedom with you. And then you got to believe your leadership. You see, my wife and I have been privileged over the years to, to have met a whole lot of folks, some very wealthy people, and very successful business people. And, and a couple of them, you know, um, a young lady who owns a pretty substantial beer brewery company. And another lady whose husband owned a well-known tire and rubber company, makes tires. Now, I can go to the lady and, and, and ask for political advice and political support and, and, and business advice and some contacts and really get some advice from them. But I cannot go to that woman that owns the brewery and say, hey, can you show me how to mix some beer up and distribute it and compete against your children? <laughs> Think I can do that? Think she'd be applauding my success? If I say, show me how to, give me the recipe, give, give me the, the road map that you have. I want you to help me become a brewer master like you as I can compete against your children. Did she help me? The young lady with the, with the tire rubber, I mean, big nationwide franchise. I told you who it is, you'll know who it is immediately. God go to her and say, can you show me how to get the contract to Brazil and make the tires up and distribute it and import it in and and, and sell it to the tire company so I can compete against your children. But folks, in the business you're in, you take any leader back here 
and I ask them, can you show me how I can be as successful as you? They'll say, I'll show you how you can be more successful than me. And they will applaud. They will be happy for you to bring you on stage and say, he is more successful than me. They'll brag about your success. Can you understand the, 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 the gift that you have? That you're in touch with business leaders who are eager to show you how to get to where they've gotten to. You don't get that. that that's, that's why I love this business. I've seen it too much. I'm at a guy's home to have a business meeting the next morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm flying across country. I'm tired. He's tired. Bloodshot eyes. He is worn out. And I'm at his guest house. He's showing me all the cars. Take a, take a Rolls Royce. Go, go, go get some dinner. You want to a call? Remember the restaurants on the wall there? They come feed you. I got to go and show this business to somebody. I got to drive two hours away. And it's 10 o'clock at night. And I'm saying, come on, man. You got to see me at 8 o'clock in the morning. I flew across the country. I'm tired. You're tired. Why don't you rest up? Anybody you know in that city, they'd be honored to get a call from me to go, to go show this thing for, for you. They'd be honored to get a phone call from you. Why are you going to travel on, on a hope he'll be there. Could be a no-show. Or even no, but you're gonna travel two hours as rich as you are, as successful as you are, as well-grounded as your business is. You're gonna drive two hours on a maybe to show to somebody you don't even know why. You know what he said to me? Look at me right now. Because somebody wants to be free service. Trust me, he wasn't doing it for himself. You want all the keys to success in this business? You want all the keys to success in every business? The key to any success? Service. You can't be doing it for the money. You can't be doing it for the glory. You can't be doing it for the honor and the prestige and the applause. You've got to be doing it to serve someone. The reason you spend more money at the, at the Ritz-Carlton than the Marriott, same bed by the way, same bed, but the reason you spend more money at the risk cost than the Marriott is service, better service. The reason I spent more money for my plane ticket and sat next to a person spending less money, I got better service. I got to walk in front of the line when I checked in. I got, I got my bags checked for free. I got service. Everything you do, look around you folks, everything you see was presented to you by a rich person because of service. The, the, the toothpicks, the napkins, the salt, and the salt shakers were presented to you by a rich person trying to serve you. If you want to know the key to success in business, be the better servant. Be the person sitting on your, on your 20 acre estate with four gas homes and 10 cars in your garage, all worth more than my home. And you get in your car to drive two hours to serve somebody, hoping they want to be free. If you get to that point, you're going to make it. That's what you're going to do. Now, I'm going to give you an analogy. One day there was a man who, who found the Lord. And he was excited about finding the Lord. And he was wading into the beach one day, just saying, I just want to know you. I want to seek your face. I want to understand who you are. He's wading around in the ocean. He said, I just want to know who you are. Show me who you are. And he felt a hand on his shoulders. And it threw him down in the water and held him down in the sand and the surf. And he couldn't breathe, and the water was washing over him. He tried to hug the struggle to get up. He couldn't get up. Finally, he was about ready to breathe in water and sand. He was lifted out of the water. And he crawled to the shore, gasping for air, laid on his back and gasped and looked up as he breathed hard. He finally heard a voice and said, Will you seek me like you sought that breath of air? You'll find me. And success is the same way. When you seek it, like you, seek, like you sought that breath of air. When you are a woman impregnated and that baby is kicking inside of you to get out, you know it's coming. When success is kicking inside of you, when you can't sleep at night till you get up and find some prospect, when you cannot rest, then you know it's time for a birth. You prepare your, your barn for the harvest. You prepare your way. 
you get tapes and, and books and you, and you act like you already have the victory. You act like you are a prisoner, not a slave. You're here this weekend because leaders want to be around leaders. They feel comfortable around leaders. Backstage, they're all the same. Every backstage I go to, they're the same. Leaders, they love each other. They love what they're doing. They love their country. That's who you are on stage and backstage. You're the same people. Gather your army just like yourself. The same personality, the same courts, the same dislikes, just like yourself. And you keep preparing, you keep marching toward this goal. It's a simple goal. They made it as simple as possible, but you're gonna fall. You may fall 300 times. You're gonna stumble and scrape your knees and scrape your lip, bust your lip open. You're gonna, you're gonna not succeed. Everybody won't love you, especially your boss. Won't love you. But freedom, folks, is so, it feels so good. I mean, one day I was riding around in San Diego and I got a phone call from my editor for the paper. He was called to tell me he didn't like what I had written for an opinion page. You hear me? <laughs> it's an opinion page. I mean, did I slander somebody? Did I, you know, did I put some dirty laundry out? What, what? I don't like your political views. It's an opinion page. And I was just laughing. I was laughing, just laughing. He said, what's wrong, Mason? I'm serious. I said, that's why I'm laughing, you serious? <laughs> you're serious. You're going you're gonna to call me and debate an opinion column. I'm laughing because it just feels so good not needing your opinion. <laughs> it just it feels. It's an opinion column. If you print it, send me a check. If you don't print it, don't worry about it. I get paid to give my opinion, not to make you happy. And he can understand it because in this job, everybody wants, wants to be friends with the editor. In my job, I'm free of trying to be friends. So I, I want you to understand what I'm saying to you tonight is don't stop being the child. Don't stop expecting the next development in human development. Don't stop expecting to be free. Be free of mama, be free of the crawling, be free of the walking, be free of the running, be free of the driving, be free. Does anybody here know who their great, 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 great grandmother is? Very few, you know why you don't know? Because she did not leave you an inheritance. <laughs> Had your great, 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 great grandmama left you some money, you have a plaque on the wall, though, granny. <laughs> you know, I love my granny. I wish I could have met my granny. You, you have left. Leave your children an inheritance. I have fruit trees planted around my garden. My children ate. My grandchildren ate. We brought them to Calif from California here. We planted fruit trees. When I dug the pond, I got pictures of them playing the bottom of the pond so they can come back and tell their kids I was in that pond full of filled with water. The fruit trees are eating it from the pond. Folks, that's the difference between an orchard and a farmer. And, and later on, when I get back and talk about the diamond and the rough, I tell you the difference. You have to be the person that plants something that will last for generations. Be the first in your family that your great, 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 great grandkids will know.